In the past, I've shown you several different ways of building a full year calendar heat map. For example, here's how we build it with discrete headers. It looks okay, but all of the months really run together and it's not really particularly useful and we don't know which month is which. I then showed you how to build it with continuous headers. And this looks a bit better, right? We've got the circles, but they still don't really fit that great together, which I don't really like the look of. And I also don't like how I only see my weekdays across the top of the view. But with map layers, we opened up Pandora's box for the things that we can do. Look how beautiful this looks, right? My months are spaced really well. My headers are perfectly aligned and I've got the weekday headers with every single month. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this visualization. Let's get started. I'm Andy Kriebel, Tableau Visionary Hall of Famer and founder of Next Level Tableau. If you enjoy this video, remember to give it a like and like every other YouTuber says, go ahead and click on subscribe. And if you're interested in learning with me every single week, three times a week, go to nextleveltableau.com and you can find all the details there about becoming a member. Let's get back to the video. First, you can find a link to the data set that I'm using in the description. Just download it and you'll be good to go. Once you have it downloaded, all you need to do is grab the data source and drop it on top of the Tableau Canvas and Tableau will connect to it automatically. On the left-hand side, we have a list of tables. Let's drag the orders table over to the right-hand side. And there we go, super simple. Let's go ahead and go to sheet one. Now I'm going to show you how to build this as a table first so that I can explain some of the calculations we need to do along the way. Let's filter down to a single year since this is a full year calendar heat map. And let's pick 2024 and click on OK. First thing I need to do is I need to create buckets for my months, right? If you think about a calendar, you've got three months across and four quarters going down. That's the way that we want to lay it out. We're going to first create a calculated field that brings back the names of the months. So let's create a new calculated field and I'm going to call this one month name. The calculation I'm going to use here is date name at the monthly level and the field I want to evaluate is purchase date. Click on OK. And if we drag that to the rows, we can see we get the names of each month. Now we want to create that kind of column view where the first month of each quarter goes down the first column, the second month of each quarter goes down the middle, and then the third goes down the right hand side. So that means we need to group together the months into their individual columns. So for example, we want to select January and then hold your multi-select key, so command on a Mac, choose April, and then we want to choose July and October and then go ahead and hit the paper clip to group them together. I'm going to then right click on the field and choose edit alias. And I'm going to call this one for column one. Let's repeat this for the second column in our calendar. So that's going to be February, May, August, and November. And again, click on the paper clip. This is going to be column two. So I'm going to right click on that header and choose edit aliases and call this two. Select the last four months, hit the paper clip, and right click on that and edit the alias, and let's call that column three. Great. So over here on the left hand side, we have this field called month name group. I'll just go ahead and leave the name like that for now. It doesn't really matter. And then let's go ahead and move that field to the columns. Right click and drag purchase date to the rows. And we're going to choose discrete quarters. So this is going to give us a row for each quarter, Q1, 2, 3, and 4. Click on OK. And then we want to put our weekday headers within each month. So right click and drag purchase date to the columns and choose the weekday option. Click on OK. Now, when you think about a calendar, when you go down the calendar, you're actually looking at the week number of each month. So right click and drag purchase date to the rows and let's choose discrete weeks and click on OK. And it goes from week one to week 52 or three, however many are in that year. But notice how each of our individual months are offset, right? They kind of go down in the ladder. We want to make sure that we align them all going across. So for example, we want to take the dates for February and move them up to here to be in alignment with January. We want to take the dates for March and also move those up in here so everything aligns. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find the first week number of each month. So for January, that'll be week one. For February, that's gonna be week five. And for March, that's gonna be week nine. Okay, so let's create a new calculated field. 
and let's call this first week per month. And we're gonna do this with a level of detail expression. So type in six, that's gonna start our LOD, and we wanna do this at the month and year level. So we're gonna use the date trunk function. The date part we're gonna use is month, and then we need to evaluate our date field, which is purchase date. And then type in a colon, and then we wanna get the first week for each month. So that's gonna be the min, and we could just drag in our week field from the rows. Close off the parentheses for the min, and then add a right mustachio. Click on OK, and Tablet brings that back as a measure because it's returning a number, but we don't want to aggregate those, so let's drag that up to our dimensions. And if we drag that to the rows, you'll see now that January, our first week, is week one. It's week five for February and week nine for March. OK, great. Now we need to align them all. So let's create another calculated field, and let's call this our week offset. What we want to do here is we want to take our week number, so for example, week four, and we want to subtract from that our first week per month. Click on OK, and again, Tableau brings that down as a measure because it's returning a number. Drag that up to our dimensions, and then move the week offset field to the rows. And notice that every month restarts at zero. So for January, it goes zero through four, for February, zero through four, etc. All right, so now we can do a bit of cleanup. Let's take the first week per month off the view and take week off the view. And there we go. So now we have our really nice calendar layout. So notice how my weekdays start with Monday. If you're in the US, it's gonna start with Sunday. So what I need to do to use map layers is I need to assign a number to each day of the week. So let's create a new calculated field. Let's call this weekday number. And I'm gonna use the date part function here because date part returns a number. So date part, and we're gonna return the weekday of our purchase date field. That's it. Click on OK, and again, Tableau brings that down as a measure, drag it up to our dimensions, and drag that up to the columns. And you'll see Tableau always assigns Sunday the number one, but I need it to be my rightmost column because I'm not in the US. So really what I want is I want Monday to be one, Tuesday two, and I want Sunday to be seven. So I'm gonna change my calculation a bit. Again, if you're in the US, you don't need to worry about this part. I'm gonna edit my weekday number calculation, and I'm gonna say if my weekday number is equal to one, that would be Sunday. Then I want to assign that the number seven. Otherwise, I want to return the date part minus one, and then end. Click on OK. And now notice how it goes one through seven across the view. Perfect. This is all we need now to build our map layers. OK, I'm going to leave this here because we might refer back and forth to it. Create a new sheet. And let's again go ahead and filter down to our single year. Choose 2024, OK. And I'm going to create a new calculated field. And I'm going to call this my day point. I'm going to use the make point function. And if I flip back over here, right, I can tell my week offset, that's going to be my latitude, right? So picture this as a map. I've got my latitude going up and down, and I've got my longitude going left to right. Okay, so my latitude is going to be the week offset, and my longitude is going to be my weekday number. Click on OK. Let's go back over to that sheet, and if I double click on that, notice how I start to get something that looks like a calendar. Well, we need to split up the view like we did here with our month group going across the top. So let's go ahead and grab our month group and stick that in the columns. And then right click and drag purchase date to the rows and pick our discrete quarters. Okay, so now this is really starting to look like a calendar. Let's go ahead and put the day numbers on top of each of the marks. So I'm going to right click and drag purchase date to the labels and choose day. That's gonna return the day number of the month, one through 31. Click on okay and change your mark type to a circle. All right, great. Notice though how the weeks are upside down. Well, that's because latitude goes from the equator at zero 
and it goes positive going up, right? So we assigned, back over here, we assigned week four as a positive number, so it's going up, which means it's increasing the latitude. So we need to kind of flip that around. So let's go back over to our sheet, and let's edit our week offset calculation. I'm gonna wrap the whole thing in parentheses, and then just put a minus sign at the beginning. So it's just gonna flip the axis around. Click on OK, and you'll see everything flips over. Perfect, exactly what we were looking for. While we're here, let's go ahead and do a bit of formatting. I'm gonna click on the color shelf, and the first thing I wanna do is get rid of those halos, and maybe I'll add a dark border to each of the circles. And on the label shelf, I'm gonna align it the center horizontal and the center vertical. And then I'll allow the overlap just in case. All right, so now we can click on the size shelf and we can increase the size. But notice how perfectly packed together they are. We always had the same amount of space between the circles left to right and between the circles top to bottom. Okay, so maybe I'll increase them a bit more and you can see how everything comes together. Look at that, perfect. All right, so I wanna go ahead and color this by profit. So I'm gonna drag the profit field on the color. And this looks fabulous. Doesn't this look like so much better already? If I go back to what we want to build, we've got our circles done and we have kind of the structure of the calendar done, kind of our three by four grid, but we wanna get those single weekday letters across each month. And we also wanna have the month labels on there. Again, this is where map layers comes in super, super handy. Let's create a new calculated field. And let's call this our weekday labels. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use another make point function. And this time we want it to be above the circle. So our top circle is zero. Our bottom circle is like minus four, something like that. So we need to be above the first line. So I'm going to set my latitude to one. And then my longitude is going to be my weekday number. That's it. Click on OK and drag that over onto the view until you see this add a marks layer option. So drop it there, and notice we've got these circles going across the top. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? Super, super easy. Let's change the mark type to a text, and I'm gonna right click and drag my purchase date field to the text shelf, and I'll choose weekday. Click on okay, and you see our weekdays are going across the view. It doesn't look particularly great, so let's right click on weekday, and choose format. We wanna choose the pane option because we're changing actually what's on the canvas. And let's set the dates option to be the first letter. Great. And then click on the color shelf and remove that halo from the background. Perfect. Doesn't this look like, I mean, I love how this looks. It's fantastic. Okay, so let's go back over to our calendar here and we have the month labels above the weekday labels. Okay. So we're gonna create another calculated field and let's call this our month labels. Let's again think about where we need the latitude to be. So our first line, this line here is zero. This line is minus one, minus two. Our headers for our weekdays are at one. So we need to be above our weekday headers. So that's gonna be, let's just use two. So we're gonna use the make point function. We want the latitude to be two and we want the longitude to be the middle of the week. So that's gonna be day four. So type in four and click on okay. Drag that on as a map layer. Again, we've got this perfect dot above the view. Let's change the mark type to text. And drag your month name field onto the text shelf. Perfect, right? Isn't this, I mean, I just love how this looks. Click on the color shelf and again, remove the halos. All right, we are most of the way there. One of the things that I really liked that we did in our Next Level Tableau class is we went ahead and added a spark line on top of each of these months. So you can see kind of the day-by-day -day trend, right? You can kind of see it with the map. Like I see August 13th was a bad day. So I want to kind of see the trend across the month. So I'm going to create a new sheet. And let's right-click and drag purchase date to the columns and choose purchase date continuous. This is gonna give us every single day in the data set. That's okay, don't worry about it. And I'm gonna put profit on the rows. And then let's go back over to our sheet. Let's go ahead and also drag profit onto the detail. And then right click and drag the purchase date field to the detail and choose the month year option. 
Click on OK, and if you hover over, you'll see it says January 2024, profit, etc. So let's go ahead and clean up our tooltip now. So we want to go ahead and get rid of the month name and the quarter. Let's move this month name up here, and we can get rid of that one. Okay, so I've got my month name and my profit. If I hit preview, I could see, okay, that looks good enough. But then I want to have that spark line in the tooltip. So I'm just going to add a couple of spaces here. And up here on the upper right-hand side, another click on insert. I'm going to insert my sheet three. So this is my line chart. Okay, you could play around with the height and the width if you want. So if I want this to be, you know, maybe 300 by 200, I want to keep it nice and small. That's great. But the key here is in this filters option. So I want to get rid of all fields. And what I want to pass to that, if I go to insert, I want to pass my month and year. Click on OK. And now when I hover over January, I see my spark line, right? It looks fantastic. I can go back over here to the sheet. Maybe I'll go ahead and edit the axis. Let's get rid of that purchase date title. And uh, that's probably good enough, right? Yeah, so that, so that looks great. You can, again, you can adjust the size if you want. From here, we need to do some cleanup. I don't want people to be able to click on my weekday label, right? So I do that, it kind of looks weird. So because we're using map layers, on my weekday label, I'm going to click that triangle and disable the selection. For my day point marks card, I'm going to go ahead and right click and drag the purchase date to detail because I want to have the full date on there. So choose purchase date discrete. Click on tooltip. And let's go ahead and clean this up. So I don't need day of purchase date. I don't need the month name group. Okay, so I want the purchase date, get rid of the quarter, and then my profit. So if I click on that and hover over, you'll see that looks really good. Now you might think, well, I can click on this, but I don't want to be able to do that. Now with map layers, if I disable the selection for my day point, like I did for the weekday headers, now I don't see anything in my tooltip, right? So that kind of gets rid of the tooltip as well. So we're going to need to leave that enabled. Let's go ahead and right click on the quarter field on the rows and uncheck show header. Right click on the month name in the columns and uncheck show header. Go to the format menu and choose borders and we want to get rid of those row and column dividers so in our dividers option set the row divider to none and the column divider to none now i need to get rid of that background map but i want to show you what you shouldn't do if i go up the map on the menu background maps and then choose none right that does get rid of the map background but now i feel like i've lost control over my spacing of things but this is okay if you like this view that's perfectly fine as well i'm going to hit undo but what i'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the map and choose background layers. And I'm just going to wash out the map. Okay, there we go. All right, last thing we want to do then is we may need to play around with the size of the circles. So let me just click on that. Maybe I'll just reduce it to this click. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and throw this in a dashboard now. And let's drag sheet two into the view. And notice that I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my profit legend on the right hand side. Notice how it doesn't quite fit the view. So there's a couple things we could do. The way that I would fix this is I would just go ahead and change the height of the dashboard. So let's maybe make it 900. And I'll make it maybe less wide. Okay, we're nearly there. I'm just going to go back over to my sheet two. And I'll adjust the size of my circles ever so slightly. And there we go. I now have a perfect calendar. It looks absolutely fantastic. Your users are going to love it. And with map layers, we can customize the look and the feel to get it exactly how we want. I've barely scratched the surface with you on map layers. Imagine what you could do if you got to do this 45 to 50 times a year with me, live in class. And that's what Next Level Tableau brings to you. You get to work with people that are in your exact same situation trying to solve the same problems that you are, trying to improve their careers, and that's what I help you do. So if that sounds like it's of interest to you, Go to nextleveltableau.com and sign up. And if you sign up for an annual membership, I'll give you a complimentary 30-minute one-on-one to help you get started. I hope to see you there. Leave me any questions you have in the comments.